Hey there, I'm Catherine McNamara from Shadowhunters, Arrow, and Maze Runner. Hey, I'm Luke Baines from Shadowhunters and other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've had probably a really, really lovely New Zealand experience. We, we had a few days off before we started working at the con, and we just saw a lot of really lovely, cute animals. Mm, it's been awesome. It, it's so similar to... Ugh. It's so similar to Australia, um, which I love because it feels like I'm at home, but also I'm not. So I'm kind of on vacation and I get to experience all the things I love about Australia, like the good coffee and the good food mm -hmm. and the good chocolate. Um, but it's it's far enough away that I get to like just have some free time and yeah. hang out. And all the people that we've met have been so lovely and kind and welcome. Yeah, genuinely. All the fans are so sweet. Sweethearts. They all thank us for coming and <laughs> it's, I'm like, of course. Like, thank you for letting us come to New Zealand. It's such a treat. It's been really nice. Ooh. What was your favorite? I don't know. There's so many. We had way too much fun shooting together, but I think something that always sticks out in my head is that first. It was this, all of the the scenes in the apartment for the first two episodes because we that we shot that over the yeah. course of a couple of days, probably a couple fifteen hour days, just us in the apartment shooting. Really and cool. Yeah, we had a lot of time to rehearse it and kind of get into that world and really create and establish this relationship. Yeah, I think that was really special. It was it wasn't actually the filming so much because I was really sick that day. <laughs> That's true. I got food poisoning, um, but. The rehearsal period before that, yeah. just you and I hanging out in that apartment and yeah. having playing, it was really fun. Um, but then I also really enjoyed the some of the stuff in the cell. I thought yeah. that was that was a fun that was some fun stuff that we got to play with because it was so limiting, like it was so restrictive in terms of where we were. So mm -hmm. we had to like really come up with like creative ways to play with one another, and, and I thought that was really cool. And then probably the <laughs> I'm saying seventeen things, bone chandelier. Bone Chandelier was so fun. It was really fun. Um, for, for a time. For a time. Like for a time until he dislocated his shoulder. But it's... I, but I really, up until that point, had yeah, fun. But up until that point, I had a lot of fun. What sticks out to me, though, too, is all of the stuff as Clary was turning darker. Because once I finally got on your side of yeah, things, then we got to really be a team instead of being, you know, toe-to-toe. Yeah. -to -toe. But I did love all the stuff in the cell, because you get that, we'd established the relationship oh. enough by that point, because yeah. we ha got to have that kind of tete-a-tete, -tete, cat and mouse. And Paris. Oh, Paris! Oh my god, duh! Paris. 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 <laughs> Jonathan. Yeah, you always say that. I always say that. It's my favorite character from the book series. Is it because you think you could do it better? No, actually, no. <laughs> Between you and Will, I know I couldn't have done it better. Um, um, but I think that it's just, I love the, the, the tragedy that is Jonathan. And mm -hmm. I have such a respect for the character, not only because of the two amazing men that have played him, but because I've never read a book series and hated a character so much and then come to complete 180 and love the character in the last two minutes of his life. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a book. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think I would say Harry, uh, Magnus. Yeah. Just because he gets to do so much cool stuff and like the wardrobe's really cool. <laughs> He's brilliant. And it's, I don't know, it's just, it's a really cool layered character and I think mm -hmm. that would have been fun to, to play with. Yeah. Oh, back to the previous question, the last scene. From the finale. You enjoyed doing it? I loved, oh, I mean, I, I loved doing that scene. That was my least favorite scene. It was very cathartic shot. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Just wow. because, no, 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 rude. no, rude. sorry, that sounded so bad. No, because no. I was crying you and I got to like say goodbye she and have cathartic. closure. She was <laughs> waiting to get rid of me. No, that's not what I mean. That's what she means. You know that. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Actually, we can announce now that we are starting a girl band. I mean, a girl. <laughs> <laughs> We are the new Spice Girls. <laughs> we are the new Spice Girls. I'm posh, obviously, because I only wear black. Yeah. Uh, you're baby. I'm baby ginger, because I'm sometimes ginger. Okay, no, you one my or the baby other You're baby Spice. <gasps> but there's only two of us, so we have to cover the whole basis. Okay, well then I'm scary and bosh. Okay, cool. And, and I'm, sporty. So, yeah, and I'm baby ginger, <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, sorry, um, uh, question was... Was, do you want to do music? And do you? And actually, yes, that's something that now that Shadowhunters is done, I have a little more time on my hands, and I'm going back to it for a little bit and trying to actually put something out there in a real way. Nice. I would, if I, like, it would be an absolute dream, but I know I don't have the talent to back it up, so I'm not going to. That's not true. No, it's true. But it's fine. Um, I would do a musical. Um, if, if that ever came my way, I would love to do a musical. I theater. wish I could sure. go back to theater. I miss yeah. it like crazy. We should write this. That's really been done. Spice Girls musical. Um, <laughs> Shadowhunters, the musical. Shut up. Copyright. 
Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Can we do that? Can we write that? How do we do that? I don't know. Haley could write the music. Perfect. You heard it here, folks. I will fly with my wings. <laughs> True. It's gonna be You're like Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. <laughs> <laughs> we are one, brother. <laughs> Yeah, music was really, really helpful um, because he is a kind of dark human to get into, and I'm not naturally that way uh, unless I haven't had coffee, which because I have. We just didn't give him <clears throat> coffee for six months. That's that was it? my acting technique. Yeah. Uh, no, I I used a lot of music to get into it. Um, I had a Jonathan playlist, which was extremely dark. Some of it wasn't that dark, like Blink One Eighty Two, but um, it definitely got me the right space of mind. Space of mind? Frame yeah. of mind? Headspace. Sure. Cool. All of the above. Hella fucking tragic. <laughs> <laughs> um. I would say, uh, I'm trying to put this together. I, I, would, I would say, um, faded coincidence, magical faded coincidence. Mm. All right. I know for me that playing Clary, I, I've never played a character that's so close to who I am as a person, and looking at it at the end of the process, it's it's funny to see how paralleled my journey was with hers. You know, getting thrown into a world that you didn't know much about, being surrounded by a chosen family, and learning and going through a completely transformative process as a result, and becoming someone completely different on the other side of it. And um, I think something that playing her taught me through that is that it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to not be perfect, and as long as you put forth your best effort, it's not how many times you fall down, it's how many times you get back up. Mm, sweet. Um, I'm never going to say anything funny. I'm just going to say that's sweet, because it really was. Thank you. I was being sincere. It's a shock to everyone involved. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think something I've always known or I've known for a long time is that uh, you know, the red thread that connects a lot of human beings is their search for belonging. Um, but it was really evident with Jonathan that he just really wanted a place of belonging. And it was really nice to be able to explore that. And I think it's something that I will take into different characters as I move forward. I like that. Mm -hmm. Quite a few things, actually. I did not take anything that I wasn't given, for the record. I will say that. I just rolled my eyes and I don't know why. Um, you know me. I couldn't do that's that. What I, I that's can't why I can't steal anything. But um, the camera crew did give me the, this little uh, artist dummy that Clary had in her room, and they all signed it. Like Glenn that's and all those really, folks signed really it and handed things. it to me after we were done shooting in Clary's room. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I, um, I also didn't take anything I wasn't given because I just didn't want to get Disney police on my ass. Um, I have a bunch of his clothing, and I have the leather trench that they made me because I asked them, so you know why? So when I, I literally went into them one day, and I was like, "Edge, I want a leather trench," and they're like, "Okay, cool, we can buy one." I was like, "No, I want one like Spike from Buffy," and that's why they made that leather trench. No way! Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just figured it was mine by right. Yeah. So uh, I took that and. A sword and a death star, like a the the shogun. Is mm -hmm. that what it's called? The, I don't know. I didn't throwing use those. Stars. I didn't get those cool ones. Um, and a stele. That's it. I have to give huge credit to our wardrobe department because they built so many incredible pieces for the show. Mm. That jacket, Clary's jacket in episode twenty, the the kind of leather duster jacket. Um, Clary's dress for the wedding, Clary's mm. dress for Bone Chandelier, they were all things that were the built Sealy, from scratch. The Sealy dresses. The Sealy, the dresses. Sealy Queen dresses. Yeah. And they had to like sew them into, like they were so finely done that they were so neat on set every day. Mm -hmm. The best and most fun. I mean, there are certain times in doing what we do for a living that you just kind of look at yourself and at each other and go, 
This is our job. Mm. We're in the middle of a beautiful forest, surrounded by an amazing group of people, half of which have, you know, elf ears and vampire teeth and swords of, and we're all leather clad with rubber swords, running around like children, yeah. playing and play fighting. It is the most fun job in the world. It's hard as hell. You go home yeah. exhausted and covered in bruises, but you have the most fun of your life. Yeah, that's the stuff that actually makes me sad thinking about, like, not getting to do that because yeah. that was really fun yeah and and it was it reminds me of being like a five-year-old and being like you're gonna be a princess i'm gonna be a <laughs> whatever and dragon and you know yeah you go this way i go that way and we like it's except someone else is telling you yeah. but there is like such a really beautiful piece of like um like using our imagination that you don't get to do as adults um and that's yeah that was really cool and also I give huge credit to our stunt department on that because they were the ones who made it. So not only did they, they invest so much time and energy in how each creature moves mm. and in how each character fights and in inputting the character story within the, the way that we move in the fights, mm. but also they taught each one of us and trained each one of us how to fight and they made it a safe environment yeah. in which to do so. Like Darren McGuire, who was our stunt mm -hmm. coordinator, genuinely I think is the best in the business. Mm -hmm. um, they took so much time with us, especially for someone like me who was thrown into the middle of chaos. <laughs> um, and I was supposed to be like this, equal, a fighter that was equally as skilled as Dom Sherwood, which is just not possible. Nuts. He had three years of head start, but... Mm -hmm. um, you held your own. Not really. You did. Literally my shoulder popped out. <laughs> that was not fighting dumb, to be fair. <laughs> anyway, but, um, but they took so much time with me. And, and not even, like, from... Like, there's the technical aspect, and then there's, like, the personal aspect mm -hmm. of, like, just taking the time with the actor and being kind. Mm -hmm. And they are so wonderful. So there is that. They're family. It's, it's a dream come true. You know, as someone who was such an avid reader as a kid, I was never without a book in my hand. And I read so many stories like this growing up. And um, getting to bring it to life knowing what that means to so many people it's a responsibility that I don't take lightly and it's it's a huge honor and it's something that I try and and you know pay homage to the source material to the written word and to these stories but but bring them to life in a way that still makes it new and fresh and allows the viewers to experience it in a way that's still exciting Kat, how did you like under the Hill Lake? I have been traveling internationally, and I have not had a chance to see it yet. Oh, that's so weird, because it's on in iTunes. Do you not have access to iTunes? Is it on iTunes? Yes, it you is. You just tell me it's on iTunes. <laughs> I thought it was in theaters still. <laughs> no. Now I know. I'm going to download it for the plane home. Thank you very much. Really? Yeah. Yay. Okay. Um, I don't I'm sorry. Why am I such a brat? I remember when you were shooting that movie. I came over to your house a couple nights before, and mm -hmm. we made cookies. Yeah, and we I sat and ate cookie dough. Covered you were, you were really bruises. mad at me. Oh no, that was after you shot it, wasn't it? It was after I shot it because that's right, because I couldn't come over before. Yeah, because I was not eating because I was naked. So I brought you cookies. Um, how was it? It was genuinely one of the best experiences of my life, and it and it was the project that um, apparently I have a stud on now. Um, it was the project that I finished. I walked off set of my first day, and I called my manager and I cried, and I was like this is what I want to be doing with my life. Like, it just working with him, he's so talented. The director was so talented. The The script was incredible. And um, and there was just so much, like, honesty on the page that that came to the scene. And I I loved doing it. And it's the kind of stuff I want to keep doing. So proud of you. Oh, thanks, kid. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, that show has been such a standard and such a, a hallmark of this world of superhero television that it's a huge honor. You know, when I when I first auditioned, I didn't know I was auditioning to play their child. It was just supposed to be a, you know, a rookie cop with a few episode arc and then I get a call from the showrunner saying, "Oh, by the way, you're Elicity's child." And I went, "Huh? Can you say that one more time?" So I proceeded to watch the entire show, but I, I give the biggest credit to all of them on set and and the crew as well because they welcomed me with open arms i was the new kid on the block i'm coming in trying to pick up this this legacy that they've created and do justice to these characters that they've spent seven years and this relationship that they've spent seven years building and they've done it so well and that's why people respond to it so much but the writers have really taken great care to craft this character in such a lovely way that you know i haven't worked with steven yet expressly but he's definitely taken on a fatherly role with me which i very much appreciate and working with emily was an absolute dream. We're definitely going to miss her a lot, but uh, it's definitely friendships that are going to last quite a while. 
I mean, this is something we talk about a lot because we often get asked this question, but I think the biggest thing that I would have to say is, you know, make sure that it's, it's something that you really love. If you love it, if it's something that your very soul is telling you that this is what you need to do with your life, go for it. Find those opportunities and pursue it and don't let anybody tell you no. Mm. But just make sure you really love it because it's not always easy and it's not always the... The, the the easiest life to live no. but if and you it, love it it'll be the best one and and to add on to that it's I think try to understand the reason behind why you would want to do it if it's because you want to tell stories and mm -hmm. that's something that's in you and there's a fire in you to tell stories uh, then then do it mm -hmm. if you want money <laughs> Go and be a banker or a lawyer because you will make so much more and it will be so much easier. Yeah. And no one will tell you horrible things about how you look. Um, if you want fame, just start a YouTube channel where you do stupid things and that will also work for you much quicker. Or take really amazing photos for Instagram. Yeah, you know, yeah. like be a model. Honestly, the, the only reason I would say to do it is if it's, if it's the thing in you that won't go away unless you do it. Mm -hmm. And expose yourself to as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Watch every single thing that's been done and read, read every book. Go to every play that you possibly can. Mm -hmm. I want to work Wait, with Luke Baines again. Oh, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Um, She's like actually a politician. <laughs> no, one, one, when are you going to run? Uh, never. You're going to run for office. No. Yeah, uh, no. Only on, on screen. Um, who, you know who mine is. Tell me. Tell the, tell the world who my dream co is. Sarah Michelle Yes, but no. Ooh. You know this. Remember when she tweeted me? Oh, Sarah Paulson? Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson. Uh, yeah, I would second that. Yeah. I would also say Viola Davis, though. She's someone mm. who I've watched for years, and I, I just love how diverse and vulnerable, and yet she has the strength and this vulnerability that constantly play back and forth, and her, it, everything is so nuanced and beautiful. Mm. I just want to watch her. She's incredible. Her. Yeah. I think for me it's something that... You know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to do what I love for a living. And with that happens, with this age of social media, with that happens to come a bit of a voice and, and a bit of an influence. And I don't want to waste that. I, you know, I, I, there's so many things that we can do to even make a small change in this world. And, and little tiny things that every single person can do can help make a huge difference. And if there's anything I can do to help push that forward and, and help unite this world that we live in, it's, mm. yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I, um, it, it genuinely means so much to me. I've been working with Oxfam for like three years before I had a platform. So, you know, I, I was acting, but I didn't, I didn't have, you know, I, no one cared about what I had to say. Um, still don't, but, you know, a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I was using my friends who are, who do have big profiles and, and in social media following, and I, you know, like one of my really good friends, Claire Holt, who just gave me her Instagram password and was like, yes, you can post stuff about Oxfam. So um, it means so much to me that I can do that now myself. Um, and I think that had I not been an actor, it's something I would do full time and, and maybe something I'd do full time at some point in my life. Um, it's really important to me. And um, and working with Oxfam is incredible because they're trying to end the injustice of poverty and I think that's really important. Um, other than Arrow, uh, I was in a film, Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia wrote, directed, and is starring in his directorial debut film, which I was lucky enough to be on for a day. It's you know, a whole ensemble cast of a million amazing people that are just popping in and out, and uh, it's, I, I think he's brilliant, genuinely, and I am so excited to see the film come together. I have Under the Silver Lake coming out on June 20 in Australia. I believe New Zealand, but I could be wrong. Um, and then I have another film coming out in a couple of months called A Dark Patch. It could also be called A Dark Place. Was it the... I can't remember. Oh. Um, no, because they changed it. It's not, yeah, I'm yeah. not that bad. Um, but it comes out soon. And um, it's, it's a, a thriller indie. Um, obviously it's because it's got that in the name. That's what I really know to tell you. It's a family comedy. <laughs> it is not. <laughs>